I think the motivation behind a lot of the things that I used to start in the very beginning were simply because I just wanted to win, to be the best and reach the highest heights. That if I could win that debate, win that person's support or win a new subscriber and someone believed in my mission or believed in me just as much as I did, that I was doing my job or doing enough. But when so much of your ideas of success are dependent on outside things or people, how do you remain in your power? How does that make you a real winner? How are you not so easily swayed by the perception of the people you want to win over or the establishments that you want to dub you this winner? I realize that outside of winning anything, I really just wanted longevity. And in order to have this longevity that I seek, I needed to master winning in the mind first. And more importantly, I realized when I over-exaggerate the importance of winning in everyone else's eyes but my own, I'd be walking into a black hole of people-pleasing and servitude that will not end. Only we can define what our wins are, but we have to make sure that we're doing it for ourselves and not the approval or acceptance or support of others alone. So that way when we're not at the end of our work or at the end of expressing ourselves, living in our craft, living in our gifts, that we don't feel completely depleted. We have the energy to stay in the fight and the will to help inspire others. This episode will be about healthy ways I define what it means to win really in the mind and in our lives. I'm hoping this episode will be of service to you in any way. If so, do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Welcome to the Ron Hap Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week, I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So, let's get started. There are things in our life that require us to climb to win, even though we're deathly afraid of heights. To be honest, one of my biggest fears as a speaker, as a performer, as a writer, is freestyling. To trust the wisdom that I've had by experience, to be confident in the moment when someone asks me just about certain things that I should know about. I think for so long, in the freeness of my expression, I've been so easily misunderstood because of the way that I speak that I get insecure that things don't come out right or I'll say it wrong or I'll say something and then hours later I'll say dang, I should have said it that way. Maybe it would have resonated more. But to be asked to pull wisdom from a place on the spot that in my experience, I have only been able to discover within me through deep solitude and silence, it's scary. I don't want to say anything wrong. I have a responsibility to say things that resonate and I love that, but I don't want to get canceled or offend anyone by saying something that isn't politically correct. So I get so wrapped up in the sacredness of my solitude and that being the only place to pull from when in reality, if I was comfortable and I was confident enough with the wisdom that I have, I could see that the source that I use to pull wisdom from is absolutely everywhere. And there will never be a perfect time to a And there just will never be a perfect moment to attune myself to such an openness, which is why practicing meditation and journaling as a practice is so important. It's because it teaches you ways to anchor yourself. When the time is never right and things happen outside of your preference or control in life and the chaos that is your life is calling you to bring your attention to so many places outward, Do you still have the willpower to master yourself? I saw a video interview of Toni Morrison talking about, you know, those creative blockages and she was speaking to someone that she knew in publishing about not feeling right to write. Nothing was flowing because of her surroundings at the time or where her life was or whatever, I assume. 
it may have felt unsafe or uneasy to just put herself in the mindset to write creatively at that time and he reassures her that like no this is the time where you must write you know definitely write who cares if the conditions aren't perfect the conditions are never perfect use it let it also bring you something that you can use in your creative process like why make excuses not to be who you are when you claim yourself to be an entrepreneur an artist whatever there's a kind of obsessiveness that we must have that doesn't necessarily allow things in our personal lives or in the outside world to interfere. Not because we're just so determined to win or succeed or be the best, but because in a way, the separateness that we keep is something that helps us nurture you know, our craft, our gifts, and all of the things that are truly ours. I like to think about it like this. If I'm a mother with the responsibility to take care of my children, to protect and provide for them, I can't allow the things that stress me or make me afraid to penetrate my abilities to nurture. Because although those things are real, it does not matter or serve my abilities to nurture. I have to do it. I have to perform, I have to write, I have to be there and be present and act on the servitude of motherhood. So I have to anchor myself. What are ways I anchor myself? I do the task and be fully present in it no matter what. And through the fear of whatever that thing is, I'm learning how to help others by my experience. If my intention is to help others, by my fears and the reality of my experience, it gives me more truth and honesty to pull from when I'm expressing myself. Also, because winning in my mind means mastering my emotions and I take on my fears a little bit more rationally so that it doesn't necessarily scare me into stillness anymore. When I see something and I'm afraid of it, I just don't allow the fear to consume me. I look at the fear and say, what can I do to move past it? What is the excuse that I'm telling myself as to why this big thing in my mind is keeping me small? If I am afraid of a certain height or a certain level, I have to get real with myself about why that is. For a very long time, there were things that I wanted, but my biggest fear was actually having them because I didn't want to experience the embarrassment of losing it all. Or I didn't want to feel the guilt or the shame of having it and because of my own mistakes or my ego or my lack of appreciation or understanding of what I truly had, I mishandle it and I allow it to slip through my fingers. And I think a lot of that has kept me in spaces where I wasn't fully showing up and that was comfortable for me. I think I just reached a certain age. Well, you know, I'm 29 now. I'll be 30 in September. And year 29 for me was actually taking a chance on myself enough not to allow the fears that I had in my past to dictate how I moved. Like, I just didn't want to exist in my year 35 and say, damn, I should have started that thing when I was... 28 29 because who knows what I could have become or how it could have worked out for me I just wanted to be on the other side of that and I wanted to experience it here I wanted to experience it now and I feel like maybe so many of us are being manipulated by our fears so much that we are unfortunately convincing ourselves that what we want is completely out of reach and that is not necessarily true. When I lived in my old apartment, I was like trying to figure out all of the ways that manifestation would work for me. So I would write down the things that I wanted and I would stick it on the ceiling of 
my apartment, where I would open my eyes. One of them was authenticity. The second one was 100k subscribers the other one was girl get up um because it's hard for me to get up in the morning and um just compassion love honesty just like all of these ways that I needed to show up every day to exist in my higher self and I think it actually worked I I think doing those crazy things to psych yourself out of the fear is something that for me it seems ridiculous you have no idea how many people like I would have come into my apartment and it was a studio so there wasn't really much moving around that you could do but they would look at the time and like did you stick paper on your ceiling (laughs) like it sounds completely insane but hey you know it works for me being that crazy obsessive weirdo that just goes that extra mile to to see if something works I like experimenting with myself and I like experimenting through my fears there are some things still today that I'm afraid of freestyling speaking without a script those are one of the things that are hard for me because my authenticity and the the deep things that I say that resonate are through a process of like writing things down and erasing, writing things down and erasing or trying to find the right words to really needle point whatever it is I'm feeling and sometimes it's hard for me to do it in the moment. It truly is. Do it scared. It It, it doesn't matter. Do it uncomfortable. Maybe the discomfort will bring something new and fresh out of you in your process of whatever it is you're trying to do it's okay to do it alone there was just a point where i realized support from the people i knew or loved or anyone wasn't a requirement to complete and fulfill my mission in every disney story or hero story that i have attached myself to that i resonate with it really inspired me Because it was like this one person beating the odds by exploiting the power of one. I'll be honest and say that maybe that's just how I've always been. But I have never had a lot of community. Matter of fact, being in groups have always made me anxious. I had a lot of social anxiety growing up because if I can be real, you know, growing up in Houston... There's like a specific type of way of being black sometimes that just was not allowed or it just was looked at as being weird, you know, awkward even. So it's like I, if I wasn't the most hood or trying to be this most aggressive black girl, I was super lame or or something else it's like this this very interesting in between of being a multi-dimensional black girl that left me very anxious growing up because I didn't know how to truly express that it's like I can resonate with you but I'm also not a hundred percent you I can resonate with this and all of the quirky stuff but I'm not even a hundred percent that either and being in the in-between never really having the freedom or expression to be fully who you are it could make anyone especially someone that isn't confident within themselves at such a young age really anxious and just quiet I'll say that So I never had a large group of friends and this served me because when I think of what it takes to win, I've never included the support of my family or friends as a necessity to feel that. And it sounds cold or harsh, but I never have. And I think that's why I've been able to just kind of push forward. Having support has never been a necessity for me. So I don't necessarily go through, well, they're not supporting me, so I feel down about what I want to do. Well, he or she didn't necessarily comment under this thing. So it's, it, 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 none of that, I knew people weren't going to really understand or kind of support it. But 
that's something that's like a part of it. A few weeks ago, I had someone DM me asking, like, what do you do if you start, but the people in your community aren't supporting you? Like, how do you handle that? My initial response was like, girl, forget them people. Like, it doesn't really matter. You're not missing out. And when I say forget those people, it may sound a little too raw. And that same type of response also carries like resentment towards them that you're upset that they're not supporting in ways that you hope or you want to show them or prove them wrong by not needing them even though their support would make you feel good. In my experience, support was not a requirement to be in my life because I didn't grow up with a lot of people or support anyway. So I never really knew what it felt like to have just a whole bunch of people excited about what you had to do. I don't want the people that love me or the people that I love to feel uncomfortable with speaking to me about my extracurricular things or my hobbies or the things that I enjoy their support, although it's great, it's not a requirement to be in my life. When I put on the energy of wanting to prove them wrong or wanting to wish they always supported me from the jump or they better get on this train or the price is going up, I'm going to leave them behind. All of that is a waste of energy. It it really, it only makes you feel like you're lacking when you say things like that. Because although you're saying it, you, you're doing it because you feel like you're missing something. When people allow me into their lives and I know more about what's going on in their lives, it's a privilege. So I don't feel obligated to know the ins and outs of my close friends' hobbies, what they do. I ask about it if they shared it with me already. And I genuinely show interest if that's something that they love. When it comes down to like the things that I'm working on, there's so many people close to me that know more real things about my real life Adding on the things that I need support in or like the the channel, the the podcast, like all of those things, it's not a requirement to be in my life. And I don't want to put the pressure on the people I love to support me in ways that truly they support me in other ways, you know? So I told her their support is not a requirement for you to do well or succeed and when we take these half steps and sit back and wait for others to acknowledge it not only are you wasting your time by being distracted by the small thing but you're closing yourself to an entire population of people who will eventually see you love you and resonate with you enough to support When the people I speak to every day don't show interest in my interest, it doesn't bother me because I don't really care about theirs either. And this is real and it's really not a big deal. And most can't relate because they just care too much about everything and everyone and they're so love and light and that's amazing, but I'm human with a different attention span. I have to obsess over certain things to get what I want from it. And if I'm talking to you or whomever every single day about who's not supporting what I'm going to do, what I want to do, I'm not really doing the thing, am I? Have a winning mindset. It takes a level of obsession that does not have time to pay attention on who's around me when I'm doing what it is I'm supposed to be doing. Relationships will suffer and they have suffered from time to time. They know that I'm on a mission to do what I need to do and they love me regardless. They can either be upset about it or love me in the ways that they can because in genuine honesty, I'm not asking anything of them. 
if I can't show up every day because I'm trying to perfect a craft, if I have to spend time more at home and not really hang out or go and drink because I have some editing to do, people that actually care and that are in my life and they know me and know how my work ethic is and how I obsess over things, they admire that about me and they allow me to do what I need to. I think... What I realized, you know, outside of me, because I don't have really a lot of people in my life, I know a lot of people can get easily distracted by the people that they love and the people that they care about because I think there's a part of us that genuinely wants to be good to the people that we love or not give people bad experiences, but at the same time, none of that truly matters. It sounds harsh, but to be honest, I'd hate to look back and realize I missed an opportunity to do more because of my emotional investments to the way that others perceived me. The world doesn't fall apart when you dial into your craft. You just see the world a lot more clearly enough to focus your mind on things that truly matter right now and completely forget about the rest. Because I'll be honest with you, the emotional, you know, things that go on with your friendships, relationships, you know, all of those things can become a distraction when you're actually in the mindset of taking yourself seriously. Unfortunately, having it all as in like the perfect relationship, the perfect career, the perfect all of this, it it doesn't exist. And I don't necessarily aspire to have anything perfect. I just aspire to fulfill my mission. And not everyone will understand that level of focus, but that's the sacrifice I'm willing to make so that I am making myself proud at the end. Do it broke. I think you become unstoppable when you realize that you don't need to have it all to do it all. Matter of fact, you have done a lot more with a lot less. It's really all in your mind and the ways that you view the resources that you have. A lot of the things that I had to make a podcast, make a YouTube video, those were things that I already had inside. I just didn't see it materialized yet because I was just so focused on so many other things like... Everything that I had to, you know, make the podcast, to do everything that I'm doing now, I probably could have done years ago. I just wasn't focused on it. It's like when you finally shift your perspective to what you have, you realize, wow, it's more than enough to take care of the things that you need to. Even for myself, like, you know, when you start actually like getting your equipment and doing all of these things, you just obsess over hoarding all of these really cool stuff. Like I'll tell you, like Best Buy is probably one of my favorite stores. I just love walking in there and seeing what they have and going online and seeing like all of the different gear, right? Because that's just me. But there was a time where I had a different lens. It was, it was a 30, well, I still have it. It's a 35 and I wanted something wider just so I can have a different shot. And I was talking to my partner like, no, I need to get this lens. I have to get this lens before da, 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 da. And he was constantly telling me like, you don't have to get the lens, but that's something that you're telling yourself. Once you get the lens, nothing is going to change. So you might as well do what you can right now. And that was so annoying to me, especially when there's things that I want and I want what I want. He was saying everything right, everything right. But I was psyching myself. I was stopping myself, assuming that nothing was going to look right if I didn't have this, you know, this shot. And it, none of that even matters. If I decided to do a podcast with no visuals at all, just talking, I'm pretty sure that I would be okay. I Everything would be fine. I don't have to make the most perfect thing. You know, there's a difference between wanting to show up, you know, by putting your best foot forward and just wanting to show up in this perfect 
chapter 27 version of yourself when in the beginning I was really only at like maybe chapter 10 and I always I want to be so far ahead of where I am I frustrate myself where I judge myself for not having it all figured out and it ruins the process because secretly what I'm doing is I'm comparing my resources to other people's I'm comparing someone else's chapter 100 to my chapter 10 or 16 and I had to stop thinking that other people's ways were better than my own like I unfortunately started when I started And I'll have another video about late blooming because, you know, I'm in my late 20s. I'm like a true millennial. So I have the people that were above me, like, you know, born in the 80s or maybe early 90s. And then the people that were born below in the 2000s and later. And I'm like this in-betweenness of like... I have some a little bit more sense than that. I have a little bit more sense than that. I'm kind of in this in between where I see life so differently. I think it's now our time to kind of like use our voice and express ourselves. And I think I represent that population that's a little bit more, you know, grounded as much as I can be. I think a lot changed for me when I realized that I had all of the tools to make it to my destination, I just wasn't materializing it yet. It just wasn't in my mind yet. It wasn't in my mind set yet. And that's kind of also what scares me. It's that you could change your life within a matter of months just by the way that you're viewing your present moment. And I think a lot of us, like we waste our times assuming that this future moment is going to be perfect, but we forget to do the work in the present to kind of pull that better version forward or pull ourselves closer to it. And this last year, like I said, it will be an official, it was an official year in June that I was consistently making videos on YouTube. And I'm so happy that I did because outside of wishing and hoping that someone was going to see me one day and choose me without doing any work just someone's going to see me in a grocery store and say I want to make you you know this thing realizing that I had to become an entrepreneur and I had to be at the forefront of my brand and my creative image and use social media as a tool in order to get where I want to go that was the key that was and then the minute that I started doing that I opened my eyes and literally everyone that I looked up to was doing the same thing but they were of course farther along they you know they have been in this industry a lot longer than I have but I'm like okay I may not be where necessarily I want to be as an artist or as a performer but at least I'm building something that is my own so that way when I'm in the rooms or when I have the representation that I need or there's someone that works with me as far as management goes and they're fighting for me I have some like collateral I have something behind me that people are willing to support that people are you know able to respect it's like your mind gets blown everything that you thought you wanted you get a clearer vision of and you realize hmm it's gonna take a lot longer than I thought but at least I'll be doing in a way with you know, a little bit of dignity. And um, even Victoria Monet, beautiful woman, amazing artist, but she spoke about the amount of years that it took and all of the routes that she took to get her to where she is now. And she trusted the journey. She trusted the pace of her life and she did it, you know, in her way. And I'm pretty sure she has so much gratitude for the version of herself that said, okay, yet said yes and did it regardless of how it looked and stayed in the fight. I think having a winning mindset, especially when there's something that you want to manifest or there's something that you want to call forward to you, 
we have to think about winning in new ways because there's so many ways that you can win but i think there's something significant about having your own journey learning from your experiences and having the tools of experience on your belt like you may not be exactly where you want to be but i can assure you the person that's where you are made a lot of mistakes to get where they are and they're only there because of those groups of mistakes or maybe a person that you witnessed has an opportunity that you don't have and they're struggling with it because maybe it's put them in a very tough situation there's so many things that we don't know which is why honoring your truth defining what winning is in your mind is so important and um yeah thank you all so much for liking commenting and subscribing and making it to this far in the video i love you guys so much if anyone is interested in having a one-on-one -on -one with me the link is in the description below if you are interested in getting information on your youtube channel your podcast and ways that you can amplify your voice let me help you if you're interested in figuring out what it is your purpose is and how you can further walk in your purpose in this life i'd love to sit down with you talk about what it is you want to have in your life and ways we can pull that closer to you and uh yeah i can't wait to see you guys there do not forget to follow me at jasmine.siri on instagram and all of the things and i can't wait to see you guys in my next one